Good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Roini here, and uh, you are watching Rapid Quiz. That is all about the clinical anatomy, the scenarios, the MCQs, all this we discuss in this Rapid Quiz, and it's there at uh, 9.30 p.m. So just for the month of May, I have this timing, 9.30 p.m. From June onwards, you will see me with the same quiz that is at 10 p.m. So the quiz will be at 10 p.m. from June. Please make this note that is from 9.30, it is shifted to 10 p.m. So I will look forward to seeing the same set of students and um, with more encouragement at 10 p.m. Okay, so now first, um, let's see how many students have been watching this and uh, they have any queries to start with. Okay, we have watching this and uh, many, all right, we have. Okay, the first one, before we start with the quiz, just a quick introduction about myself. So I just want to um, tell you. Okay, I'm Dr. Ruini. I have about 10 years of teaching experience in India and abroad. So uh, I would be teaching this subject anatomy. So I'll be covering most of the clinical aspects for you. If in case your basics are not very strong, you can always look for the special classes which I have every single day in the morning at 8 a.m. and also in the evening. Variable times, but today it is at 11.15. So it is about 11.15 p.m. So you are going to watch me the special class i come up with a topic every single day so it is going to be a topic based question so you are going to have now at 11 pm morning we have discussed the tm joint we have discussed tm joint in detail you can go and look for this topic that was conducted at 8 am and now we have a suboccipital triangle Suboccipital triangle. It's not just the triangle and the boundaries. I'm also going to discuss the contents and with each content, we are going to discuss many other aspects. Did you know that vertebral, vertebral artery and the suboccipital triangle has some connection with each other? So let's see what is the uh, connection that I want. I'm talking about. It is something to do with your clinical study. So such aspects we are going to discuss. So okay, let's keep this guest going until the time that is 11.15 when you are going to be with me for this class, suboccipital triangle. That is tonight, 11.15 p.m. And you are going to get a notification. So don't worry about uh, you know who is going to give the reminders. Reminders will be given provided you have a app that is called Learners app. Do you have this learner's app? Of course, if you have it, you are going to get the notification. So once you have the notification, you know that you will be motivated to obviously study. So you will get a notification. It's like a reminder, individual reminder that it is time up for you to sit down and study. So you please download this app, learner's app. You can download it. It's very simple. I'll tell you how to download and you can follow me at R-O-H-A-Q-U-A and my code is R-O-H-I-N-I -I. and for all the special classes I have the code R-O-H-I-N-I 10. Okay, so this is going to be my special class code. You can get 10% discount. You can avail this discount of 10% when you subscribe for the plus subscription. So this is what you can do. So now We'll start with the rapid quiz. 
that has most of the clinical aspects. I hope everyone is watching and uh, already. Okay, if you have any queries regarding the same, let me know. Okay, so before, uh, you know, we start, can I get a please like and a subscribe from your side? Okay. All right. We have some people watching. You can download the app using this uh, Unacademy Play Store. You can go to look for Unacademy app. That is learner's app. And then you can look under Need PG section. You can look for various courses, various educators, all this. And then you can also get subscription. This you can do. And there are various other courses. You can use this drop down to check what else you have. What else you have. There are so many mock tests. And practice tests. Quiz. All this you can unlock. So use the code R-O-H-I-N-I to get maximum benefit. Okay, with this. Okay, so now some people have been hitting likes. Thank you. Let's move to the first question. First question says, identify the plexus. Now you can see the plexus. What plexus is this? There is L4, L5, S1, S2, S3, S4. All this you can see. You can see the big sciatic nerve. So now let's quickly see what is this plexus and let's also figure out what is the root value of femoral obturator and now you can see all these nerves you can see the femoral obturator sciatic all this you can identify and one more thing that if you don't know if you know the femoral you can also get the root value of one more nerve which is that nerve it is the same anyone has an idea yes it is lumbosacral plexus Lumbosacral plexus, you can see. Good evening, SK, Nilusha, and uh, Battleground. We missed Battleground yesterday. I missed SK, and Nilusha has been there even at uh, 6 p.m. class. And uh, now I know her. But where was SK and where was Battleground yesterday? I missed you. Okay, so now there are two important nerves you can see one is the femoral another one is obturator let's see what is the root value what is the root value of these what is the root value of femoral can you please check and tell me anybody anyone it is lumbosacral i know but what is the root value of femoral You can see the femoral has the root value from lumbar. You have this uh, lumbar plexus. Anybody? Root value of femoral. I can give you the root value of sciatic. You can see the sciatic big nerve that is this one. Sciatic is L4 to S3, right, you're right. Okay, what about these two? What about these two? Femoral, I'll give you a minute to say it is L2 to L4. Okay, the femoral is, is it true? Is it correct? What about femoral? L2, L3, L4, yes. So, this is the same root value as the obturator now. Did you know this? These two have the same root value. Obturator now and femoral now. So, that is one nice thing. Next one, sciatic L4 to S3. You can see the L4, L5, S1, S2, S3. They all join to form the sciatic nerve. Okay, this is a very important nerve in the posterior aspect of your thigh. Okay, so now it passes through the 
static greater static foramen how is this turned into foramen anybody knows it is not a notch anymore it's a foramen how did that turn into a foramen it was a notch when there was no ligament that is a hint now it is turned into a foramen what are the ligaments that turned into the foramen There are two ligaments. That's another hint I'm giving you. Which are the two ligaments that turn this into foramen? One is sacro tuberous. The other one is sacro spinous. These are the ligaments. Sacrotuberous and sacrospinous ligaments turn this greater sciatic notch into foramen. And the pyriformis muscle divides this into two compartments, above and below. So, below is what passes the inferior gluteal nerve along with the sciatic nerve. So, you can remember this. <coughs> You can simply remember this with the eyes pin. Pin. With this mnemonic, you can remember all the contents of lower compartment of greater static foramen. So remember this I spin pin. Okay, I spin pin. So I will give you the mnemonic now, but I will be taking a separate class on the gluteal region. Okay, gluteal region will be taken in a separate class. You can watch for my special class where I am going to start from the June all the lower limb topics. Lower limb topics will be taught here and you can bank on all the small minor details here and that is where I'm going to talk about gluteal region, the hip bone. You can get maximum um, you know information about the sciatic notch, foramen, pyriformis, everything. So all the contents, mnemonics, everything, I'll tell you how to remember. And that is going to be from the 1st of June. Okay. Next, second question. The deep lacerations of the popliteal fossa can damage which nerve? So now you have a popliteal fossa laceration. And which nerve? can get damaged here. Just think of the nerve that can get damaged here. Anyone has an idea which nerve? Okay, some people say tibials. Okay, you think it is tibial? Let's see the options. Anyone else? Tibial? Yes. So now let's go back to that. Now you know that the sciatic divides into tibial and the common peroneal. Common peroneal divides into the superficial and deep. Deep, let it go in front, the superficial. And tibial comes down. This is for the posterior compartment. This is for the lateral and this is for the anterior. Okay, so the answer here is in the popliteal fossa, it is the tibial now. So tibial now is present. What muscles does it supply? Muscles does it supply? What set of muscles? So now posterior compartment has how many set of muscles? It has a superficial set and it has the deep set of muscles. What are the superficial muscles you can mention? Anybody, what are the deep muscles? Supermissile muscles are the gastronemius and soleus. 
What is the tendon formed by them? Gastronemias and soleus. What is the tendon that is formed by them? Anybody knows what is the tendon? Yes, it is called tendocalcaneus or Achilles tendon. What is the action, important action of this? At we, we, we do this um, exercise to strengthen this muscle, to strengthen this tendon. What is that? So you try to point your toes down. What is that action? Or you keep it on an incline. Which muscle, Achilles tendon, is for which one? Achilles tendon is for which one? So you can point your toes downwards, that is plantar flexion or this one dorsiflexion which one plantar flexion so you are pointing your toes downwards remember point it downwards pointing your toe downwards is plantar flexion p for posterior p for posterior so remember posterior compartment Okay, that is plantar flexion. Okay, that is not called depression. Here we don't say depression. We use the depression only for jaw. We use the depression only for jaw and other, you know, bone related things. For the muscles, we don't use this. The bone, when bone is depressed, then we use the word depression. So don't use the word depression for this. Depression is when the joint along with the bone comes down. Now this is only muscles. Okay, so this is not with the bone. So it is the flexion extension. So there is no depression. So depression you can use for mandible, not here. Next. So now here gastronemius, soleus that forms the Achilles tendon. What about deep muscles? We have a toe, right? What is the muscle for toe? Anyone, what is the muscle for toe? Anyone, what is the muscle for toe? Tibialis posterior. So all these are flexors. Flexor. Hallucis longus, yes. Flexor hallucis longus. Is it? What are the muscles at the back of the neck? Is it digitorum? Digitorum. Flexor digitorum. So these are the muscles that you can see on the back side. But what about the ones which are on the superficial or the lateral? Superficial peroneal nerve supplies the lateral compartment. You can remember this as PLES. This is one mnemonic you can remember. E for aversion of foot. Yes, for the nerve. Superficial peroneal nerve. L for what is for L lateral compartment. P is for plantar flexion. The lateral compartment has two muscles: peroneus longus and peroneus brevis. But what about peroneus tertius? Where is it? 
Where is this one? It is in the anterior compartment. Anterior compartment has peroneus tertius. Okay, so you have the same muscles in the anterior compartment. Instead of flexors, they are all going to be extensors. They are all going to be extensors. One for the toe, rest for the digits. So extensor digitorum, extensor hallucis longus and then you have this peroneus tertius and tibialis anterior. So don't forget tibialis anterior. That is also present. All right, all this is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve. Let's move to the next question. This is the explanation for that. You can see the tibial nerve here and see what happens to the foot when this nerve is not functioning. So tibial nerve actually is uncommon. Injury to this is uncommon because it is secured in the popliteal fossa. But sometimes the deep lacerations in the fossa like the hit injury, cut injury, knife injury, all this can definitely damage the tibial nerve. If this damages, then the foot drops down. Drops down, remember. Deep peroneal now. Foot drop is by deep, no, injury to deep peroneal you should remember it is deep peroneal now because the anterior compartment is supplied by deep peroneal remember the d for d it's so simple why you want to you know break your head so much it is drop foot drop is deep peroneal as simple as that okay so if you are finding things simple and able to understand please go follow and also hit a like. It's very important your likes count for us. Okay, next. So that is going to be deep peroneal nerve, anterior compartment, the muscle which is going to be the one which brings about dorsiflexion. Who is the prime mover of dorsiflexion? Who is the one who, which will help lift the foot in the dorsal aspect? That is the upper aspect like this. That is moving the foot upwards. Is the tibialis anterior. So tibialis anterior is what gets damaged in case there is a damage to deep peroneal obviously. So the dorsiflexion action will not happen. The foot drops. Okay, next one. Okay, now there is a small thing at that note I wanted to tell you. See, one thing is for sure, you are student, you want to reach your goal. And you should always believe in yourself first. Believe in yourself first. Then you should always trust your educators. You need someone to motivate you, to guide you and also to make sure that you are going in the right direction. So all this we can help you with and make you achieve your goal. If you have The trust in the platform and academy, which can give you this 100% coverage of the subjects that you are looking for. Like you want to put your 100% effort and then we can guide you with your effort. We can take you to your goal. So this is possible. We are with you to achieve, achieve your goals. And uh, this is possible when you have... Uh, watched our videos when you attend all our special classes and then you turn them into 
the plus subscriptions for your 100% you know involvement so you have plus subscriptions which can give you the whole lot picture than what you are exactly seeing here this is just a glimpse of what you can get or a demo of what you can get so this is not it when this can be so much interesting and so much of involvement you can see so you can expect what you can get from the plus subscriptions there is lots more to expect from plus subscription you can get a lot of interesting uh, MCQs, you can get notes, PDF notes, you can also join your telegram and you can find a lot of buddies who are, uh, you know, in the similar situation where what you're facing, whatever you're facing, whatever difficulties or good things you are facing, you will find similar people and then it is going to be more interesting. You will not know how you manage to crack the sneak PG exam. So it will be that simple provided you have people around you who are going through the similar things, right? So now you know that the plus subscription will make you all this available to you. You will have a lot of people doing the same thing. There will be a lot of discussions. There will be a lot of mock tests. All this is possible when you take up your plus subscription. So for that, you can definitely use my code that is R-O-H-I-N-I. You can also unlock with this in the sub sub special class subscription. So with that, you can go with this YouTube. You can use this R O H I N I. If you're watching YouTube, use this special class, use this and then go for the subscription. You'll not be disappointed. Okay. Next question. What is this procedure happening? What is this procedure happening? There's lots more to come. So what is this procedure that you can see? Okay, you can see that there is a, so there is something being injected that is to the pudendal now. So you can see that it is in a canal. Yes, it is. The episiotomy, episiotomy is not exactly your, they're blocking something. What is that they're blocking? Yes, it could be for episiotomy, but right now, they're doing the pudendal block yes so you should remember the pudendal nerve what are the what is the supply of the pudendal nerve and there is this pudendal canal where is the pudendal canal and it is a secured nerve because it is present in the obturator tendon so internal so there is an internal and an external one so internal obturator muscle external obturator so internal one is the one which has this groove that is called the pudendal groove which is turned into a canal and that is exactly where this pudendal nerve launched okay so it is a very important nerve and the block is given to this and you can read all this we were talking about episiotomy and episiotomy procedures are minor surgical procedures which involves uh, using the forceps sometimes the uh, windows delivery also and the target routes that are targeted are s2 s3 s4 so remember this very well and uh, site of in uh, injection is very important sometimes the complications can happen it can also happen if there is a damage to the blood vessel there could be a hematoma that is formed or initial region paresthesis that is can prolong for a lot of time even after the delivery time so the lady may not be able to move around freely or sometimes systemic toxicity also can happen because of the block so all this can happen as complications. So remember this, this could be a scenario based question. So where they can definitely say that there was a lady who delivered and the pudendal block was given to do the episiotomy and she experienced, they, they may not say pudendal block, she uh, experienced the infection after some days. What could be? wrong so this is one thing that you can think of next 
So now you also know that uh, the Un Academy offers this uh, 12 month subscription. So if you have a little longer time for your NEAT PG date, you can always go with this a little longer duration subscription that is 12 month subscription and you will get two months of subscription free. So this 12 plus two is going to be 14 months of very good, you know, coaching. And this two months you'll get within 30 days. So it is not going to take very long. So first 13 days itself, you will know whether you have got this extra two months of subscription. So you can use code for this. That is R-O-H-I-N-I. -I, and you can avail this 10% uh, additional 10% discount on top of what you offer you are getting. So try this. Okay, we'll go to the next one. And the next one says, there is a procedure that is happening here. The procedure says, what? This is the spinal cord. You can see cerebrospinal fluid. There is a needle and this lady is pregnant. So what do you think this is? Yes, this is the spinal anesthesia, you can see. So you have the spinal anesthesia. So that is given around the spinal cord and some lidocaine is used and all these, the nerves, the segmented nerves, the sensory nerves, the motor nerves that pass through this region are anesthetized and they're all paralyzed. So although when opioid is sometimes used, sensory, only sensory nerves are blocked not the motor nerves okay so you must know this and then also the epidural or extra dural anesthesia is one type another one is the true spinal anesthesia that is deposited into subarachnoid space the other one is deposited to extra dural space so it is not the same you remember the difference between these two spinal anesthesia Okay, next one. What is this? You can see there is this articular cartilage in the normal one. You can see all this. Articular cartilage you can see that is hyaline cartilage. And beautiful disc you can see that is the menisci. I don't want to write this again. Menisci. There is a medial and a lateral one. This medial one is bigger. The lateral one is here because fe fibula is here. Okay, so now it, it has involved the joint, has involved the bone. So you can say that there is a cartilage loss. There is a space that is narrowed. You can also see some bone spurs. So since bone is involved, it is a is a osteoarthritis. So now you can see that there is sclerosis that is hardening of the bone that is beneath the joint you can see. Okay, so these words are very important. Then osteophyte formation is there. That is small growth of bones that is there on the edges of the joint that you can see. Yes, joint space is narrow. And you can also see the cyst that is formed inside the cavity. So this indicates that it is osteoarthritis and it is not carcinoma. If it was carcinoma, we would have done a CT to find out more. So this indicates with sufficient information in the picture, we come to the conclusion that it is osteoarthritis because we saw all these things. The first thing that we noticed was joint space narrowing, right? Okay, what is this? Anyone? The question says, okay, what is this? Gout. Okay, why did you think it is gout? SK says it is gout. Battleground says it is gout. 
what do you think it is gout? So you can see that there is an inflamed joint, first of all, and there is above all uric acid crystals. So uric acid crystals are collected around the joint and this itself is an indication. Let's see. So now what is gout? First of all, it is a type of arthritis. Okay. So there is no too much of, uh, when there is too much of uric acid in the blood. So this is the highlighting factor. And they can cause this monosodium urate crystal to form in the joint. So uric acid will turn into what? Monosodium urate crystals. And there is a lot of pain, tenderness, inflammation. Yes. Joint inflammation, urate deposition always causes inflammation. Okay. See now this one. Anyone has an idea what is the use of urea? What does urea do? Uric acid is difficult, different. What does urea do? What is urea used for? You have lot of creams that are urea based. What is the function of urea? The nitrogen that is present in the urea, that is present in the urea, can dissolve the dead cells. It can soften them. That's why all this. Yes, it is present in the ammonia. All this is especially the urine as well. So this urine, urea, all this has got this nitrogen. And this is used for in food creams. Did you know this? Food creams. Okay, it is used in food creams to remove the callus. So all this callus and extra, you know, growth of skin. It has to be softened, removed, especially the callus. You read, you read, at, read what is the content of the, you know, plasters that you get to remove the callus. You just read. There are various brands. I don't want to mention any particular brand here at this platform. So you read all that and you see what they contain. They would have this urea. Okay, this is a good information. So now here... One more thing that you must remember is most commonly it affects men. So the most common uh, target is men and also the old females. That is because of the increase in uric acid in the blood. Okay, what is this one? This is also some joint related. So what is this? Anyone has an idea what it is? There is this thickened synovial membrane you can see. The synovial membrane has become very thick. And the synovial fluid also you can say that there is also degraded cartilage. So this is the joint cavity. Swan neck deformity. You have a swan neck deformity. Yes, there are different stages that is deformity due to rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, so rheumatoid arthritis, you have this um, different stages that you can, uh, you know, see. It has uh, involved the cartilage as well. You can see the body mistakenly attacks its own joint tissue. So it can happen to any joint. So it is kind of autoimmune. It becoming it becomes bent and this looks like swan neck and crooked, right? So this looks crooked. And also at the last stage you can see that there is 
all the joints they no longer move and they become very fused and they become very stiff that is the last stage if not treated in the earlier stages so it will easily progress to the last stage where there is bone erosion as well so that is something you must remember it yes sk you are right so we, you all are thinking from the you know answer point of view you are giving me so many alternatives that is really nice you are involving you are thinking what is other name for this which is nice okay so every day we have the classes at uh, you know e night 9:30 pm which is going to be shifted to 10 pm okay from june 1st June 1st, 2021 20, onwards, it is 10 p.m. dear. Okay, yours, yours? Yes. So 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. will be the rapid quiz. This was the time in May. So all this month, I have started at 9.30. Now it is shifting to 10 p.m. So this is only MCQs, but I have other classes like so many other classes all that is going to be there is one more at uh, you know 7 pm so you can see the 7 pm but that is going to be a topic it's not a quiz okay if you are interested you can join this with the for the topic which will be mentioned earlier uh, you know ahead of time so you know what topic i'm going to teach that particular day so you will have if you have confusions or questions in the topic you can definitely watch this 7 pm class you have uh, all these stages and then we'll move on to the next one what is this identify this bony condition bone condition what is wrong with this so now there is this Valram, is this correct? Yes, yes. See the class I have taught on joints classification. Okay, this there is a classification of joints on YouTube by me. That is. Type this. Type this. You will find the class. Watch the class. Are you talking about the same thing? Let me know. If not, we will have a class on the, yes, we will have a class on the joints. Okay. I think you're talking about the same thing. So now we have a genuvarum. Yes, this is the genuvarum. Yeah. Remember, it is ram. It is val gum. What is gum? Glued. If it is like this, it is rum. It is this is gum. This is rum. Will you remember? Yes. This is val rum. How do you immediately think and answer? It is because we have some tricks to remember. The gum is glued. That is knock knees. Okay, Shrija. Next, this is Val Ram. All right, but why this has happened? Why this has happened? Okay, you can see that there is this condition that is rickets, right? Rickets, yes. Rickets. Nilusha has written rickets, and then we have uh, SK who has written rickets, and. The softening and weakening of these bones in children. You can see that very clearly. This is of a child. It is not an adult. It's a child. So it is rickets. It is because of extreme vitamin D deficiency for a prolonged period of time. So they have not addressed it. And this is what happens. The fragile bones and then deformities in the joint and then there are a lot of dental problems as well so you must remember the dental problems usually we don't talk but they can mention this as one of the important thing so 
the joint and the dental. So knee, you, you are thinking always in terms of knee because you can see that very clearly. But what tomorrow if the question comes as knee and then the same scenario also has some dental issue. Then you will be confused why knee and dental is together. So you must remember it is the symptoms, one of the symptoms, muscle weakness because of decreased vitamin D. Okay, so this is bone pain and fragile bones. All this, this is the main thing, main culprit is bone pain. Nobody can tolerate this and uh, people can easily, they can feel that. They can feel that the bone pain is definitely something to do with the vitamin D. Even layman will know this problem. Okay, next one. Okay, next one. Let's see who can answer this. Defective bone mineralization in the gen in general it causes what? Now it is nothing to do with the coxa valga or coxa valram. It is general bone mineralization issue. What is this condition? When there is no good mineralization, it results in what condition? Look at the bones, how thin they are. The thin bones will always break. See, there is a broken bone here. There is a broken bone here. There is a fracture, fragile bones. They are very fragile because of what? What is this condition known as? This is also because of vitamin D deficiency. You can see that there is in the x-ray, you can see the bone structure that it is very fragile, mineral density, scan test and amount of calcium and phosphate in your bones. You can check what is the amount of calcium and phosphate in your bones can be checked. Yes. Osteo, Malaysia. This is soft bones. Okay. Next, you also have this feeling tiredness and then pain, stiffness and weak muscles, everything side to side straight. So now here people with this condition may walk like this. So this is a scenario question. They have a waddling gait. Not because they are drunk or anything. They also have a side to side stride. So they can include these two in the scenario and they can show you a, you know, picture where the bones are very soft and there are multiple fractures. You can see that there are broken bones at multiple places. So you are not talking about one single a uh, fracture because of the trauma. The bones are very thin. You can easily see the bone density is so low. All that you can see. So it is the osteomalacia. Okay, we have one more person who has joined in Trisha. Okay, we have some 10-15 minutes left, but uh, yeah, not late. All right, next we have identify. What is this condition? What is this condition? Can you identify? Anyone who can identify this? What is this? This also has this white coating. What is this coating? Tonsillitis. Yes, tonsillitis, but that has already, you know, turned into a 
it is not just inflamed there is also a lot of collection of something inside what is that it is turned into a peritonsilla abscess right what is the other name for this anyone anybody who knows what is the other name for peritonsillar abscess shrija sk peritonsillar abscess you are right you have written it but it is the next stage of tonsillitis it is also called quincy so everyone is you know thinking it is also called quincy so the only way you can drain this is by surgery so it has to be surgical approach only okay so this is the thing so there is this oral thrush you can see there is coating on the surface of the thing it could be because the, the child is a young child and there is this bacteria that is developed because of too much of milk and milk products so that is bacteria that could be from the tonsil okay all right so what is this that you can see here what is this anyone yes it could be candida candida infection so what is that one this new thing that i have marked what is this it is ulla yes it is ulla next so you can see this explanation here the inflammation of the palatine tonsils what is the histology of palatine tonsils anyone knows histology what is the histology of palatine tonsil what kind of lining does it have it's inside the mouth so you remember what is the mouth lined by mouth is lined by the same as the lip that is the stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium so the tonsil is also lined by stratified squamous non keratinized it's very important you mention non keratinized because the skin also has same epithelium otherwise so this is non keratinized epithelium yes so there is also smooth muscle fibers lining the present within these um, you know um, the lining the epithelial lining and also there are tonsillar crypts this is where the food gets collected and leads to all this uh, collection of bacteria so now here they appear erythematous and you can also see there is exudate purulent exudate and the lymphadenopathy the lymph nodes surrounding this area could also be swollen so that is one thing and then here it definitely requires drainage and you can also see that there is a collection of pus a lot of pus is collected that's why it is swollen and it looks very much you know uh, very much swollen it looks and uh, what is this thing white thing that you can see that is one of the indication it is halitosis that is because of the candida infection crypta magna is one of the crypts that is largest and which border it has it is this is the medial side okay this is the medial side and this is the lateral what is this lateral also rests on this is called the tonsillar bed
okay and there are muscles in the lateral aspect all these are muscles there is fascia and the muscles okay next last one we'll see this is the last one we have to just check whether anyone can identify this radiograph what do you see in this particular radiograph anything normal abnormal what do you see do you see anything abnormal you can see the maxillary air sinus you can see the nasal septum you don't see any teeth here so he is an adult You see goiter? Are you sure? Padla, Baiju, you can see goiter here. Goiter, you can't see. This is not an MRI. It is a X-ray, plain X-ray. I don't think you can see the goiter, but you do see the thyroid cartilage. Yes, you see the thyroid. Yes. It's a very simple one where you can see the greater cornua, you can see the lesser cornua, you can see the body of the hyoid. Okay, so sometimes the hyoid fractures are possible. The hyoid can also break. So to rule out that, this x-ray and then you can see. So now just that's a simple x-ray to identify the hyoid bone. And what are the ossifications of the hyoid bone? Let's quickly see what are the ossifications of the hyoid bone because it's very, very important. This is one bone which ossifies very, very late. Okay, so it completes the ossification at about 40 to 60 years of age. And uh, even the ziffy sternal joint. complete when you turn 40 years of age. So remember these two. This is one thing. This is another one. So body of the hyoid. Yes. So this is just after birth. The lesser and the greater cornua fuse. And you can see that there is this two centers for the body. Four centers for the cornua. And then you can see when you turn 16 years, it would fuse and then complete the ossification. And then you have 20 to 30 years. And then the greater cornova completes by 20 to 30 years. And the fuse completely with the body, the greater cornova completely fuses with the body when you turn this age. Okay, it's 42. Until then, it is not at fused. So what is the importance of this slide? Importance is it is one of the bones that ossifies last. And there is one more that is fusing last that is ziffy sternal, ziffoid process with the sternum that is body of the sternum that also fuses when you turn about 40 years of age okay so this is where and uh, these two are of the same a uh, age range so you can remember it better okay next one okay rishab says slide is clear there is Another person who has little slide clarity. So it's, it's fine, but you were able to identify. So sometimes the radiographs, you know, because of the light and other things, it may not be uploaded really well. So case study this is. Now you can see that there is a break. What break is this? Identify this bone. What is this bone? What is this level? What is this bone? What is this level of vertebrae? Is this a true? Is it a 
you know, true vertebra, atypical vertebra or typical vertebrae, that is, of course, it is cervical. What is the feature that you can identify? You can see the foramen transverse area, right? So think, it is the hyoid, yes, this is the hyoid bone. It is the true vertebra. It is cervical vertebra. It is true cervical vertebra. It is at the level of C3, right? C3. Okay, foramen transverse area, you can see it is not C1 or C2. It's not. It is between C3, C4. So you can see the fracture in the hyoid bone. See, this is exactly where the greater cornova meets the body, right? Why? Why do you think this is where it is broken or fractured? Why did I show you the slide previous one? Because I wanted to, you to know the ossification. Ossification completes between 40 and 60, right? This is like a investigation this is just like an investigation why this looks like an investigation like a cid investigation why do you think it is so huh it is because we have learned that the greater cornua meets the body and completes the ossification in this range 40 to 60 years but the hyoid bone has a break where it meets the the greater cornova and the body meets. Now here you can see the greater cornova and the body and this particular portion of the greater cornova is broken. Why? Because this, look at the age of this man. It is 35 years of age and such bones, the hyoid bone can break only if there is a strangulation death. So, strangulation hanging to so otherwise the chances of breaking hyoid bone is typically nil okay typically nil so this is exactly the reason strangulation okay next we have reached the end actually so we have uh, reached the time where we are supposed to end rest of the things we can continue tomorrow and uh, i have a uh, class that is at 11, I think it is at uh, 11, 5, that is a special class with the sub-occipital triangle. So you can attend this. I have a lot of um, information to give you, including the clinical scenarios that I can give you. That is at 11, 5 p.m. tonight. And then I also have one more class that is at... Uh, 8 a.m. tomorrow it is also going to be a special class so look forward to seeing you in these two classes today and tomorrow morning at 8 okay we signing off